Does where you go to medical school actually matter? Does it matter if you go to a top 20? What's the difference between private and public schools? In this video, we'll talk about differences in cost, opportunities in these programs, professional outlook, and much more. The top 20 medical schools are infamous. They're routinely considered the best in the country and the brand recognition is huge. While there's no universal, certainly no objective list, the most commonly used ranking list is the US News. And this is based on a number of factors, including peer assessment from medical school deans, residency program directors, research funding and productivity, acceptance rates, student to faculty ratios. The US News considers a hodgepodge of many different factors. Now, if you were a pre-med and you were just choosing medical schools based on ranking, that would be quite simple. You'd go down the list, Harvard, Hopkins, and move all the way down. But ranking often is not the only factor, especially considering when I applied the then number one school, Harvard, and the then number six school, UCLA, their medical education is quite comparable. Today, the US News has a new tier system that reflects this line of logic and buckets schools into four different tiers. When I applied to medical school in 2019, I was in a bit of a rank conundrum. I had been invited to interview at John Hopkins, which was ranked the number two school in the entire nation at the time. When I received that interview, I had already been accepted to UCLA, the then number six medical school. But because I saw them as the effective same tier of medical education, other factors started becoming more important to me. My family and support system were in Southern California. The cost of attendance for Hopkins would have been twice as much as that of UCLA's. And for those reasons, I ultimately said no to the interview at Hopkins. Ultimately, I wanted to practice medicine back in California with my family and going to a California medical school, I felt would give me the best shot of doing that. My end goal at the time was to apply to competitive specialties like orthopedic surgery. And while it didn't pan out that way, UCLA made me essentially competitive for any program in the nation. And I thank UCLA for getting me into my dream anesthesiology program in New York City. So while yes, the majority of pre-meds would give the prestige and reputation award to Hopkins, and I personally would as well, that factor alone did not outweigh the other important factors for me when choosing my school. Now, navigating all these factors is not easy, but so many pre-meds would kill to be in a position to say no to a Hopkins interview because they already have an acceptance to UCLA. These years of intentionally, proactively building a competitive application is worth it but it's certainly very difficult to do. At Pre-Med Catalyst, we help pre-meds just like you figure out what they want out of their pre-med journeys and help them step-by-step step build the application to get exactly where they want to be. If that sounds helpful, we offer a mentorship program you can learn more about in the link in the description box below. Let's talk costs between public and private schools, say UCLA versus Stanford. At a public school like UCLA, your cost of attendance annually is around $93,510. All in for a four-year program, that's $374,000. Now at Stanford, you're looking at about $144,216 per year. That'll total to $576,864 over four years. Of course, this is a very simple cost analysis. There are many considerations here. For instance, in many public schools like UCLA, you pay out-of-state tuition just for the first year, and then once you establish in-state residency, you pay in-state tuition for the remainder of the three years. This will save you $40,000 over your time at UCLA. On the other side, many private schools have much larger endowments and are able to offer you stronger financial aid packages. So these numbers aren't end all be all, but I do think largely it's safe to assume that at a private school, you'll be looking at a much larger number than at a public school. Another important consideration for choosing between public and private schools is mission alignment. Public institutions are funded by the state and they have a vested interest in their surrounding local communities. For example, the public schools UC Davis and UC Riverside are not shy about asking you in their secondaries explicitly and directly what connections you have with the Davis and the Riverside communities. Now, if you're from these areas and it's important for you to return home to serve the same communities that raised you, a public school would have a mission statement that fits you exactly like a glove. So recognize that an acceptance rate is just a number that's taken out of context. 
Just because a program has a lower acceptance rate does not mean that it is the better program for you. Now, if this has gotten you thinking about the other side of the table, what factors adcoms are considering when looking at pre-meds, we just made a video reviewing actual adcoms themselves and what they share about how they decide who gets accepted versus who doesn't. One additional factor to consider when looking at medical school programs is whether or not it will get you where you want to be professionally. We actually have reasonable data on this from the 2021 Program Director Survey. This information from the NRMP gives us insight onto how residency program directors viewed the school that you came from. It says that 46% of plastic surgery directors considered medical school reputation, 36% of ENT residencies do, 40% of internal medicine programs consider it, and 30% of family medicine programs consider it. That means for many competitive subspecialties like plastic surgery, ENT, orthopedic surgery, they consider medical school reputation. And where you go to medical school may very well matter. Now, for specialties like family medicine, where 30% of program directors considered it, this insinuates that 70% of residency programs did not. And so to them, your school's reputation may not matter at all. And your application as it stands is really all that they value. So where you decide to go to medical school is a very nuanced decision. And you want to be in a position where you can choose between different acceptances. Today, we've looked at costs, mission statements, and professional outlook through the lens of program directors telling you how much they care about where you went to medical school. Ultimately, it'll be a balance between those factors and your own values. For me, I cared a ton about where my family was living and I truly undervalued reputation and prestige. I personally felt that schools all in the top 10 were in this tier one of medical education and satisfied all the professional boxes I was looking for. And as a result, I chose UCLA to attend for medical school. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day.